It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast. After another Jets loss, this time on the first Black Friday game ever played, and the Jets, who are good at this one thing, they are good at having plays become infamous for their futility. And today they created another one, obviously, with the uh, pick six on the Hail Mary. Now has been chronicled the Hail Mary and will be remembered forever. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a play that you can't even uh, make up, a play that you can never expect to see. And while I wanted to get on the receivers for not hustling, they did come back and actually run the field, but they did so in, sh- in such a dispirited fashion. Because remember, when you throw the Hail Mary, you have maybe one back in, which you did in Hall. You have offensive linemen. You have everybody else down who's a receiver in the end zone, and you have the quarterback. So once the defensive back starts back up field, Really, it's not hard to envision him making it all the way unless he gets caught from behind. Because if he doesn't get caught immediately, which usually is the case or goes down right right away if he picks somebody off, the bottom line is once he comes up field, you've got a bunch of linemen who are very easy to go around. You got a, a back that got taken out of the play and a quarterback that got taken out of the play. Now, none of the wide receivers really broke it coming back. Wilson got back and was there just in time to get to the five yard line as the ball carrier took it into the end zone. They did not break it. Somebody has to hustle back at full speed and break that play up before it becomes a touchdown. So the idea of that play is you know, it's so inconceivable. And the Jets had gotten back into the game the only way they possibly could. They were insanely inept again on offense. The same nonsense we continue to see. Bad quarterback play. Bad penalties. I didn't even see any open receivers anywhere. I mean, I'd have to wait for the All-22, but I didn't see any open receivers anywhere downfield, as we've seen at times uh, with Zach. But they did nothing offensively. They get a pick six on a, you know, on a lazy throw by Tua, and he continues to have those. Listen, Tua doesn't put a lot on the ball. You really don't want him throwing the ball out on, outside the numbers. And he got picked off by the Jets outside the numbers on both balls. The bottom line is the one with two seconds left you can live with. I had set up the Hail Mary, so it actually gave the Dolphins seven points. But... The other one was just a play that you don't want to make in the last minute because, God forbid, it gets picked off. It goes the other way. It just isn't a safe pass. He throws some very nice long passes that just land exactly where they're supposed to, and they just get by the waiting arms of defenders. And the other thing he does is he has, he has accuracy and he has timing. He doesn't have anything on the ball. We know that. He doesn't have a lot of arm strength. And he continues to be plagued by the interceptions while he does do some good things in moving this offense. The Jets tie it on. They, again, they committed how many bad penalties on defense, including, you know, hitting an official. I mean, just, you know, the, the stupidity of the Jets on defense with their penalties is just mindless. They think they're tough guys. but And then today they got pushed around in the second half with the Dolphin running game because they got tired. I mean, the Dolphins try to do things with their running game anyway. They want to stress their running game. They want to stress it outside. They want to then try to bring it back inside. They try to move the ball a lot with their running game. They did in the second half of this game. They ran the ball well on the Jets today. They ran the ball for 167 yards. They had almost 400 yards of offense. They got They tired them out. They wore them out. Out is what they did. They got, the Jets were on the field a long time. They got tired. The Dolphins ran a lot of plays. Uh, and the Jets didn't run any plays until the game was over. Then they ran these plays. But other than that, early in the, at one point it was 57 to 22 on plays. And the Jets had two first downs. I mean, so the fact that the Jets wound up with some stats, 159 total yards, uh, some, uh, third down completions, a couple of fourth down completions, you know, stuff like that. 
uh, adding up some plays, getting in the end zone. That was all because the game was in garbage time. So that's all it was. I mean, when the Jets were in the game offensively, when the game was underway and still within reach offensively, the Jets did absolutely nothing offensively, which is all we see time and time again. And I'll tell you something. I know this is all about Rodgers coming back, so I'm not going to yell about get Sal out of here, get Hack. I never wanted Hacker here anyway. You all know that. Get Sal out of here, make the changes that have to be made, because let's be honest, this is all about what Aaron Rodgers wants. If you're part of Aaron Rodgers' neighborhood, you'll be here. That's the bottom line. If he wants Hackett here, he'll be here. If he wants Sally here, he'll be here. That's it. That's the only thing keeping Sally here, let's be honest. His record isn't keeping him here. And the way he runs his team isn't keeping him here because they continue to make ridiculous penalties. They continue to break down in every possible way. They are incredibly poorly coached. Their offense has absolutely no imagination, no professionalism, no efficiency. It is an absolute disgrace. Week in and week out. The quarter play play again stunk. All that means is he's another bad quarterback on the roster. Not that Zach's any better. It means that he's another bad quarterback on the roster. As I have told you, as this pl- turns the page to next year, it's about getting a bona fide player at backup quarterback who can play. That's none of the guys on the roster now. And it's about one other thing, and this is for Douglas, whose whose job should be on the line also. Number one, you cannot listen to a player about the players you bring in. Every player that was brought in because Aaron Rodgers wanted him has been bad. Do not allow him to influence you on bringing in players. If he does get another job, Number two, and this is imperative, and underline it and highlight it, they have got to spend every resource on rebuilding this offensive line. Now I'm going to give you number three. There is no way. I don't want to hear about Rodgers. I don't want to hear about his miracle recovery. I don't want to hear about his doctor. I don't want to hear about his procedure. I know he's the darling of the West Coast, and Al Michaels was pumping him up today big time. The bottom line is this. There is no way, if you are the Jets, if you have an ounce of football sense in that organization, and maybe if you take everybody in the building, put them all together, and stack them on top of each other, you may come up with an ounce or two. Those ounces have to make sure they explain to Aaron Rodgers that he is not going anywhere near the field behind this offensive line this season. There is nothing to play for. And if they do that and he gets hurt again, they will be the laughing stocks of the history of sports. There is not a reason in the world. You tell him now, I am not putting you out there behind that offensive line. I am not putting you out there in games that don't count towards us getting to the playoffs. And we're not going to the playoffs. We're four and seven. We've lost four games in a row and we can't score. And we can't protect the quarterback. And we can't play an offensive football game. You are not running this offense this year. Get ready for next year. We are turning the page. And if that puts you into some major pout and you want to go on McAfee's show and say you're finished with the Jets, then go do it. Because I am not allowing you, if I have one say and I have an idea about what to do with football, I am not allowing you anywhere near the field this year. So get that thought out of your head. Because if anybody lets him near the field 
in a meaningless game behind that offensive line, they should be fired the same day. And they may get fired the same day when he hits the turf. Because that offensive line is a joke. And you cannot put a quarterback that you hope can lead you to the promised land who you are paying a king's ransom and you are letting now run your entire organization because that organization now is scattered with people who should not be there because they're Aaron Rodgers' buddies, led by Hackett. You'll live with that part to deal with Rodgers next year. But for Rodgers, tell him now, slow down. Build the foundation in your legs for next year. This is now about September. It is no longer about your miracle Christmas Eve recovery. This team is not going anywhere. And you are not going back on the field this year. And if they don't have the guts to tell him that, and he wants to pout and leave, let him leave. Because you're not going to get anything out of him anyway. And you can't allow him to come in here at the end of his career and just make bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. And you don't want his personnel decisions anymore. He's not cutting the roster. Because look at the guys he brought in. How did they do this year? That's what has to come out of this. And you know what? If he wants to keep Hackett next year, who cares if he's healthy? And if he wants to keep Salah next year, well, you know what? Salah doesn't even know which end is up with the offense anyway, so who cares? Just put the defense on the field and maybe, maybe get them to stop making so many stupid mistakes. And worry about the defense. So that's going to be Rodgers on the coach, on Hackett, but no more about bringing in his buddies and forget Christmas Eve this year. Slow down and build a proper foundation and now circle the calendar for September and next season. Because this season, A, unless the Jets somehow make a morale, and I don't care if they're playing, they have the Dolphins again, they have the Patriots who they never beat. I know they have the Falcons, but they also have the Texans. All right. The bottom line is they're not running the table. And if they don't run the table, they right now are about 13th or 14th for the playoffs. They're not going anywhere near the playoffs. We know that. So why would you even consider bringing back an all-world quarterback who is ancient behind an offensive line which is embarrassing? It's suicidal. And would be one of the dumber football things I have ever seen. And I know that sets up perfectly for the Jets. Because that's a Jet move. But it can't happen. Somebody has to save them from themselves. We'll see you later. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.